Alright, welcome to the most in-depth decoration guide you will ever find. In addition to the first one, that actually caters to all platforms. Whenever I reference any given control function, I will display each console's control scheme on screen. I'll cover the basics and then go over some advanced topics, and I will show you everything you need to understand in order to make rooms like these or better. And so let's start with the absolute basics. To enter decoration mode, you can bring up your menu, then go to decorations and then decorate, and that will do it. Or you can use a room console and get to the decoration mode that way. When in decoration mode, your camera is freed from your Warframe and the same control scheme applies. However, you have the added functions of space and control to go up or down. You can press one to bring up the decoration menu and this will display every single decoration available to your clan. Cursoring over a decoration will display the name, the description, as well as the capacity cost versus the capacity left in the room. Every room has different capacity limits, and you cannot exceed that, so be certain to take that into account when you are making a room. Once you select a decoration, it will display on the right side with the same information as before, and it will also include a build time and the resource requirements in order to actually construct it. You can either select place decoration or double click on the icon on the list, and that will put you into placement mode. There are actually two types of decoration modes, basic and advanced. And this is where we're going to branch off into basic mode and we'll cover advanced mode after. When placing decorations in basic mode, everything will be surface snapped, meaning that the object will snap its orientation to match the orientation of whatever object you push it against. You're able to put decorations anywhere you would like in your room, except for specific places called red zones where placement is not allowed. There is no way to avoid red zones, you just need to take them into account when you're planning out a room. For placement modifiers, basic mode offers rotation and scaling. Rotation is achieved by holding right click and dragging your mouse left or right, and then scaling is achieved by holding R and then moving your mouse away from you or closer to you to make it larger or smaller, respectively. Once you've achieved the desired orientation and scale of the decoration, you can place it by using left click. After placement, it will display in a yellow, unfunded state. Before a decoration finishes construction, you're able to move freely through it with your camera or your Warframe. To fund a decoration, you cursor over it and press 2, after which a funding menu will appear. You have the option to fund individual resources, or you can go down and select the Contribute All function to max it out and fund it immediately. If you have the Treasurer permission, on your clan rank, then this will fund from clan resources first, afterwards it will pull from your inventory. When a decoration has finished its funding process, it will turn blue, and then the timer will begin. You can check up on the build progress by pressing 2 again on the decoration, and that will pull up the build menu. This will display the time left along with the plat required in order to finish the decoration ahead of time. Please do not ever rush your stuff. That is the most moronic thing to do besides using auric and rings in your dojo. If you don't feel like funding each decoration individually, every single time, nobody on this planet would blame you. If you go to the vault or the treasury, as it is listed in the decoration menu, in the bottom right there is an option to auto-contribute from vault. You have to have the treasurer permission in order to turn this on or off, but when active, all decorations placed will automatically be funded. This will not affect pre-placed decorations, you still have to fund them yourself. To get rid of a decoration, you simply right-click and that will be destroyed, returning all the resources and platinum spent on the decoration back to the clan vault. Note I do say clan vault, that means that any plat spent rushing will not be returned to the player, but instead will go to the clan vault. Basic mode's post-placement modifiers consist of duplication and repetition. To repeat a decoration, simply cursor over the air itself, just don't select anything, and press 2, and this will pull the last decoration that you placed in its default position for you to place again. However, if you want to duplicate a decoration that you placed a while ago, not necessarily the last one that you pulled without going through the entire menu, you can cursor over that specific decoration, press F, and it will duplicate the object as well as its orientation and size. Basic mode, given its namesake, is quite basic considering those are all the options it offers you. When you first enter decoration mode, the first thing I advise that you do is skip basic mode and just press tab. This will put you to advanced mode where you have the same options and more. And so let's cover advanced mode. In advanced mode, no decoration is snapped to a surface by default anymore. Surface snapping still exists, but it's an option toggled by pressing F. To cover the rest of the placement modifiers though, advanced mode offers quite a bit more. The first of which is grid snapping. This is toggled by 
by pressing shift and you can toggle between a tenth of a meter, quarter meter, or full meter options. This is extremely handy for lining things up quickly and is essential when you're creating architecture for baseline symmetry. What used to be called billboard facing has now been renamed to camera facing and is toggled by pressing Z. Camera facing is the second most useless thing I have ever seen right next to you. How it works though is normally in free placement when you're moving around a decoration. It maintains its orientation relative to the room itself along with the room axes, but when you toggle on camera facing, it will lock its orientation towards the camera wherever you look. I have yet to be shown a single valid use for this that shouldn't have just been done with basic rotation. Grid snap, surface snap, and camera facing are all toggled options, and as such, after you place a decoration, unless you toggled them off, they will remain on for the next decoration placement. This can be quite annoying depending on the situation, so make sure that if you're done with any of these, that you turn them off beforehand. Scaling is still achieved with are, the same way as in basic mode, except now you have the option for fixed incremental scale up or down. This used to be bound to plus and minus on the numpad, but is now bound to C and V to scale up and down respectively. Push and pull is used by holding X, and this will bring the object farther away or closer to your camera by moving your mouse in the same way as you would to rotate. Rotation offers a lot more in advanced mode. When right click is held, you now have the option to press Z to change the axis of rotation. In addition, if you mess up on the rotations and don't want to have to delete it and place a new decoration at the default rotation to start over, you can instead press X to reset all rotations done to an object and it will return to its default position. Note that this does not reset the scale, only the rotation. In addition, where grid snapping used to be, you'll now see that what used to be called rotation snap has been replaced by angle snap. This can be toggled in the same way that grid snap would be, except for 15 and 45 degree rotations. For post placement modifiers, advanced mode offers duplication as well, in addition to what is called constrained movement. Duplication though can be used in conjunction with, say, grid snap, and you can use that to line things up like, we'll say, catwalks in this example, to get a straight, lined up walkway very quickly. And then there is constrained movement. This is the key to good decorating, by far. It is achieved by looking at an object and pressing R. Once you're in constrained movement, you're going to see three axes relative to the room position itself at the anchor point of the object. This is what is referred to as world translation, although now it is called transform. Pressing any of the corresponding keys on the UI while moving your mouse will allow you to move the object to or from the directions that the arrows face. If you press Z, this will change constrained movement into local transformation, and this will move the arrows to be relative to the orientation of the object itself instead of the room, allowing you to move your object in very different directions. As you can see, grid snap can still be enabled to affect the movement as the object traverses the lines of the arrow and rotation can be added along with rotation snap. It's important to note that when using grid snap, the grid will be relative to the room always, unless the object has been rotated switched to local, and moved in one of the custom directions. The custom direction will not adhere to the room grid, and will be able to snap to places that normally world translation would not allow. Something else that constrained movement allows for that is quite unique is the ability to clip objects through other decorations or just the default rooms themselves. If you want to sync something through the floor, you can do that. Say you've built something and you don't want to take it apart, but you want to be able to get a decoration just slightly inside, clipping will let that happen. I have an entire other video dedicated to the specifics and functions of that, and I will link that on screen now. But please, please watch that as it will make your life significantly easier. It is key to doing good sculptures or grand seamless architectural works, and you will without a doubt appreciate knowing the mechanics. Understanding the proper use and function of clipping and constrained movement is what makes a good decorator. Now let's talk about personal decorations. Personal decorations can be accessed from the personal decoration menu, which is accessed much in the same way as regular decoration mode, except only by the menu, not the room console. So you go to your menu, go to decorations, and instead of clicking decorate, you'll click personal decorations. Pressing one will bring up the personal decoration menu, and you'll notice that a lot of these cost more capacity than your standard dojo decorations would. Any of the placement modifiers or post placement modifiers that affected dojo decorations will affect personal decorations as well. The only key difference here is that when you go to duplicate one, you can only duplicate it if you actually have more of them in your vault, as opposed to dojo decorations 
decorations, which are unlimited. Some decorations from the Orbiter can be interacted with, such as the Ludoplex. This allows you to play literal arcade games in your dojo if you would like. And to segue a little bit into interactive objects, the dojo has some as well, such as the Tributa, the Trade Post, the Teleporter, and the Vault. The Tributa in particular is quite neat as it allows you to, via editable information, display text in your dojo. And in conjunction with text codes, it has some very, very neat applications for what is called shadow art. If you're curious about any of the decorations I have just mentioned, videos are linked in the video index in the description below. Now let's talk about the Polychrome. The Polychrome is accessed by going into your menu, much as you would to get to the Personal Decorations menu, and this time you just select Polychrome Room. As soon as you do, you will be given a decoration to place, and this is the Polychrome. After you place it, you're given four options if you interact with it, the first of which is to Fund Construction, then Preview Colors, Change Room Colors, and Change Lighting Colors. We're going to skip the first two for now and go straight to the Lighting Colors. For the Light Coloring, you're given the color channels of Key, Accent, and Fog. Key, I would like to say, is the strongest light source cast in the room. However, that is not quite true, as not all light sources are created equally. An example would be Open Space. Key holds absolutely no sway over the lighting, while Accent dictates the entire room. Fog does just about what you would expect. Please don't be the guy that chooses the pink cancer fog. No one loves you. If you'd rather not deal with fog at all, just choose black. Black fog will not be visible. For room coloring, we have a couple more channels to work with. The color options for both room lighting and room coloring are researched at the secondary console in your Tenno Lab. The preview colors option will preview the color scheme and room lighting that you have selected for 20 seconds. However, you can bypass this timer and prolong the effect by simply, while the timer is still going, going into your menu and going to where you would normally place a polychrome but remove it instead. If you remove it while the timer is active, the lighting will stay and the timer will pause. If you'd like to keep it like this, you can just go into decoration mode again and then the timer will disappear. Keep in mind that this does not change the lighting, it only locks in a preview. So if you pull out a polychrome and interact with it again, it will revert back to normal or if you leave the dojo, it will revert as well. So you still have to fund the polychrome in order to actually take advantage of it. To fund the polychrome, you simply click fund. <laughs> fund construction, and then put in the resources. After it's done baking, the room will reflect the chosen color scheme. Similar to the preview colors option, a semi-recent addition was the preview decorations option. If you're hesitant to fund your decorations because of a lack of resources, and maybe you want to know what it looks like beforehand, you can go to the console and preview decorations for 60 seconds. This will preview them in a built and funded state, meaning they are physical and you can go about your room and walk on whatever you'd like in that 60 seconds. Unfortunately, there is not presently a way to bypass this. If I do ever find one, I will let you know. Unfortunately, you're not able to decorate while this preview is active. You can end it by going to the decoration mode in the menu, and you'll have the option to end it there, or going back to the room console where you started the preview, and you can end it there as well. Now let's touch on skyboxes and spawn points. Skyboxes are researched in the Tenno Lab next to the console for pigment research for your polychrome, and they are only applicable to rooms that have actual skyboxes. In this case, presently you can only use them on the Inspiration Hall, the Observatory, or open space. Skyboxes can be applied to those rooms by going to the room consoles, selecting a skybox, and then that's it. They don't need time to bake, they are instantly applied, and then you're good to go. Skybox orientation can be changed if you'd like to rotate which way it's facing. Skybox orientation is actually tied to your spawn points, and I have a video covering that down below as well. It's quite odd, but speaking of spawn points, a recent addition is the arrival gate. Normally when you set a spawn point for any room that could have been set as a spawn point, you go to the room console and literally select make spawn point, and then that room will be your spawn point whenever you spawn in. Granted there were some methods to make that better, but now you have the arrival gate. It is a decoration found in your menu. You simply place it down and orient it in the direction that you would like to face when you spawn in, and then you're good to go. Once again, for more information on spawn pads or the skyboxes, videos are linked below. And then lastly, let's talk about graphics settings for the dojo. The first of which is going to be the difference between the classic graphics engine and the enhanced graphics engine. Now normally consoles don't get a choice, however if you have one of the brand new consoles you're already preloaded with the enhanced engine and don't need to worry about this. But basically, just an example here, I have an infested mound's backside in a dark room just to make this super obvious, and it's not reflecting anything from the uh, text code from the Tributa. But if I switch it to Enhanced Engine, 
then you see that everything gets like a sheen of reflectivity. In general, things look better. Things just behave better with light. All around, enhanced engine is the way to go when it comes to this. And then volumetric lighting. This is something that normally you, you really wouldn't expect to occur in the dojo, but as an example, we've got the Oricon standard light here, and then the Tributa beam of light just above, and then if we go and turn off volumetric light, they simply disappear. It doesn't affect the light ray effects, but we'll get to that next, because next is effects intensity. Effects intensity determines how pronounced effects are, as you would figure. Basically, so if we have this turned all the way down, then they are practically non-existent. That fire is dim, some of them you can't even see anymore. But if we turn it all the way up, then they are super pronounced. I don't advise keeping it all the way up during actual gameplay, because that is cancer. Turn it down, but don't have it down too much. Going hand in hand with the volumetric lighting is the glare setting. Now normally, when you look at anything bright, you get lens flares, but if you have that off, you do not. Some effects have ripples or distortions on screen, and that is disabled by the distortion effect. And then last but not least is the character shadows setting. I'll just go to Mind Lab Rasputin as an example here. You'll notice this room is very dark. And if I look down, you'll see the shadows kind of pop in and out. And that's because character shadows are determined by your field of view, which is kind of moronic. I'm not a big fan of it, I'll admit, but that's just how it works. Now, PC players have the option to turn this off. Console players do not get this luxury. And I understand that console players have had in the past some serious problems with character shadows. Although I understand that newer console versions have this pretty much fixed. Character shadows are also heavier on performance than you would expect. So if you're getting some pretty serious FPS drops in your dojo, try turning that off and it will potentially help more than you think. That wraps up this basics video, but you are not done. Go on to the clipping video next, I'll have it linked in the outro. And then lastly, if you have found any of this information helpful or informative, please consider subscribing as that does help me continue to do what I do. If you want to help out, that is the absolute best way that you can, along with sharing this video with your friends since this is an all-platform guide. Don't hesitate to comment down below any questions that you have, or just to say what you liked about the video, and I will catch you guys later.